You can recall though table A1 just goes up to the numbers of uh, say n is equal to maybe 20 or so and beyond that it really gets a little uh, tedious of, of calculating probabilities on out. The good news is that from before we can remember that there are certain cases when we can approximate the binomial distribution with the normal distribution. And those come with the case of n times our proportion, np greater than or equal to 5, and n times q, 1 minus our proportion greater than 5. When we have both of those conditions, we're actually allowed to approximate the binomial distribution with the normal distribution. And when that case, just a little bit of review, that's on page 187 to 192, in that case, our hypothesis testing follows the same formula that we're very, very familiar with at this time, i.e. our test value, our test statistic for uh, z is just calculated as before. So we have the equivalent of x bar is now our proportion that we're testing. Our mean from before is our population proportion. And then in the denominator, we have our uh, variance divided by n and then the square root of that, or sigma over the square root of n in, in our denominator. So just a little bit of uh, algebra multiplying by the value of n over n over 1. The, the z value can be rewritten as x, and this would be the number of uh, green M&Ms that we actually found, for example, minus uh, pi times n, so that's just our pi being our population proportion, and then the denominator just um, gets a little bit easier. We get, we get rid of uh, one of the terms down below. So in this case, the key is like before, we calculate what our test statistic actually is, and then can use that like we did to determine whether or not to uh, reject the hypothesis. So, just as a uh, little bit of a reminder, if we don't use the normal distribution, then what by default, our hypothesis testing is based on the p-values alone. So we don't have a value of z, and our hypothesis testing is just done on the p-values because we're, we're using the cumulative uh, binomial distribution. Now, just as a little bit of a summary of the three cases that we actually have, for the case when we're seeing is our um, proportion less than our, our, our population proportion, less than our sample proportion, the alternate hypothesis is that the population proportion would be greater than our sample proportion. And so when we're getting the p-value here, actually this alternate hypothesis establishes really what we've got going on. That really means that our um, what is the chance, the probability, that a random variable is actually going to be greater than x star, where x star would be the number of successes that we have in a sample. So going back to the m, &M example, if we're looking for this, uh, what's the chance that we'd have more than 22 green M&Ms? So where this uh, relates to, if you remember the uh, binomial distribution curve before, what it's given you is the area up to a value of x. So if we want the area uh, greater than x, we have to go ahead and subtract off the total area of 1 minus this cumulative area that comes out of our data. And so that's where the case, where we're counting the data from no uh, cases, x equal to 0, on, on, on up to x star, which is the number of successful uh, data points the number of green M&Ms that we actually have. And so that's the case again 
looking at our alternate hypothesis, it really helps us plug on through the pieces. Our alternate hypothesis is that the population proportion is greater than our sample proportion, so our p-value is this uh, percentage that's determined by 1 minus the cumulative uh, area. So using that same logic on through, if our uh, null hypothesis is that the population proportion is greater than our test proportion, alternate hypothesis is that it's less than, and then the math, the, the uh, probability, gives us what's the probability that a random variable is in fact less than the number of test cases that we have. And in that case, we're really just looking for this area, the shaded area, and that is our uh, probability function, excuse me, that is the um, cumulative binomial distribution that would be in table A1. So the last test case is if we're looking for the uh, population proportion to be equal to our sample, the alternate is that it's not equal to, and that is the case when we have the two-sided test. We could look up either area. Uh, the easiest one is if we look up the value for uh, right here of our x star. Then we just go ahead and double that to account for both sides of the test. So that works out uh, really, really easy. Again, uh, logically, it's very similar to where we were, but we don't have Z values established, so we have to work with the uh, probability, i.e. the p-value. So that's what we have in the case of um, a few data points, or in the case when n times the proportion is uh, less than 5. Uh, generally, 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 we're going to have a whole batch of data, and then we'll go ahead and just calculate the Z star, the statistic sample, and use our standard hypothesis testing rules that we've gone ahead and developed. Okay, now uh, to, to give us some examples, if you go ahead and pull out that example one and example two, we'll go ahead and walk through it.